I was once at dinner a couple of weeks ago in Beirut with some friends and we were talking about what we do and they asked me, well, um, what is this Arabic typeface design? What does that mean? And then I start, and they ask questions, actually they're very curious, and I begin to express my, my sadness at the state of the Arabic script uh, nowadays and in the past as it entered the typographic era that you see in red. And whereas in the, whereas in the history of Arabic writing, there's so much beauty that um, it is just unbearable to see the state like that today. I'm a bit nervous, obviously. Please bear with me. And so I tell them there is a problem, we need to change it. But he, uh, there's a person who said, um, but we're used to reading this kind of forms. And, and I told them, okay. I took a deep breath and I didn't know what to say for a split second and I remembered a word, bitasabutina. This word has different letters that share similar forms and are repeated in one word. And here you can see that the repetition may cause some issues because you have, they look very similar. And he told me, oh yes, sometimes <coughs> when I read text, I have to stop and decipher every letter from, from the word in order to continue reading. And to me, this is an abomination to reading because if you love reading, you want to completely sink into the text and, be, and go into your imagination and not stop to decipher a word. This is impossible. And this usually happens with most typefaces of the past and of the present uh, due to many reasons we will not talk about, unfortunately, today. But the main reason being that there is a code in the Arabic script, a code that helps the reader differentiate similar look looking letters. And Tom talked about this a bit. Um, in the positive space, when you have a sequence of similar letters, they change, they go up and down, it's like music. And if you associated sound to this, if for example, you were to think, okay, what letter is that? Above, it looks like the same letter, doesn't it? And below, you can tell that you have different letters. And there is also one beautiful uh, part of the Arabic script, which is that negative space or the white space is also very clearly determined and ruled, by, proportioned with the rhombic dot in red. Um, and it also increases in half increments uh, the little circle there is, is a half. So between one letter, a rising letter, you have one, and then it goes in with halves. So this is one, one and a half, two, rising letter, we start again, one, one and a half. And to me, one should ought to preserve this, this past because it, it is what makes it beautiful, it is what makes it legible. Um, and I think the problem comes from partly this that you have in the Arabic script for a same letter, the same body that Tom calls archigraphene. And so, for, uh, I mean different letters. And so you have different letters, B, T, T, that share the similar aspect and it's only a dot placement or a number of dots that define the different letters, which makes it slightly problematic. The other thing is that for one letter, you have different shapes if you're looking at the tradition of writing. So in front of ascending letters, you have the same letter B that has this, takes on this shape. Uh, in front of horizontally inclined letters, um, it takes on another shape. And, in front, in, and preceded by, preceded by uh, descending letters, it also has a range of shapes. And of course there are exceptions to these rules, and, but if one analyzes, one can realize that it becomes simpler. If you extrapolate the forms, since it's the same body, you put the bodies all together, you add the dots, and you have the whole, uh, you have the whole set. So the duality is that you have different letters with the same shape, but also the same letter with different shapes. But what Arabic typefaces tend to look like is they compress the, the bottom part, and it, they just have the same letter, for one position and the same shape. Um, but there is another system. This is one system, and I'm not disrespecting the work of people, but there could be another way of looking at it. For example, if one researches the history uh, of the form, or one tries it out and practices research, so you, you, you study calligraphy, you can notice that actually there are forms that are pretty basic. All you need to know is what's in red, and then rather than um, designing each one of these 
um, these shapes in black, you just take what's red, add the dots, and you have the whole range. And that's a different system. Uh, but also, there is one specific thing to Arabic, which is beautification, and it comes in different levels. Um, we can freely choose um, letters depending on the context, depending on the word before, the word after. So for example here, the ha, uh, it could be uh, this ha, or that one, or that one, and they all work. Um, so that is also a freedom that to me ought to be preserved because it's one of the particularities, particularities of, of the Arabic language. And also you have even added freedom, which is some letters can be uh, extended, and this is called a happy letter in Arabic, mabsuta. Um, and also, in some cases, you can add a madde, um, but it's also dictated that in front of this form and that form, you cannot, a madde is not allowed um, for different reasons. Again, we cannot get into them. So in short, this background information was to say that rules of writing exist for, for to, to, for the readers, basically, for them to be happily reading. Uh, this is the rules of writing for function, but also they, they exist for the pleasure of reading, for the reader to, to enjoy the content of the text. Um, and now I'll be speaking of the application of these two concepts in, in a real publication by Samara Ash called Intimate Invocations. Um, it's a bilingual book, and I think we showed it earlier. So now we're, we are hitting typesetting. Um, this was a template that was given to me, uh, designed by Titus Nemet and Thomas Milo, in vo the volume one of the same author's uh, work. And uh, so the live area is in gray, you have a top folio line, and then you have side anchor, uh, anchor grid lines um, for anchors within the text. Uh, I first started with an example of the same, okay, so from now on, there will be the same text used in all different uh, fonts and variations. Uh, this is Adobe Arabic. If we plop in that text, this is what happens. Um, with open type typefaces, you don't have much choices in how to calibrate your text. You can either change the type size, and I know that Adobe Arabic works well at 14, um, and then the letting size, and given that column, uh, you know, you, you decide on your, on, on, on your letting, and that's it. Uh, that's all you can do. And it's very frustrating as a designer because you really want to do the best typographic work you can. You want to fiddle with the details of text, but you're stuck. So if you use Decotype, and this was uh, the volume one base template, um, you have a 13 over 28 Nasr font, which is size 13, letting, um, spa line spacing 28. And you have different values that I will go through right now. Um, first thing is, when I saw that, I, I thought that the text was floating too much, so um, decided to reduce the letting, of course, with, with consultation with Tom, and, and then, then, and we maintained the type size because, uh, because it, has to, it had to be consistent and it worked quite well at 13. And so, external words spacing is the, my, it's, a, it's a calibration unit that can that can um, shift the space between the words throughout the whole text. And you can tell your program that, okay, my paragraph will be set like that and define that value. So this is an extreme uh, example of what we're spacing. If you increase it to 2,000, we'll do. And if you, there's also internal word spacing, so the space between, between the letters of the words. If you also expand that, you get a, a little piece of postmodernist design. Um, <laughs> And uh, this is also for you to visualize uh, what the problem is or what, what the advantages <laughs> are. Um, so what are overlaps? There are still overlaps. Uh, Tom briefly talked about that. In Arabic, there, okay, these are the letters I'm gonna talk about. Noon, alif, ra, waw. Noon, alif, ra, waw. Um, here I maintained the external word spacing values. I had to increase it in this case. I will tell you why in a bit. I maintained all of the internal word spacing values at 150, which is the minimal value that you can choose in Tasmim. If you increase the overlap of the internal word spacing, um, you get separation of, of the letters. If um, you increase the overlap, it won't increase too much if you, if you increase the overlap too much. You get two separate words. And then, for me, the ideal situation is 
is a more Arabic situation, which is you have your ligature um, that is caused by, uh, I mean, the external word spacing with zero overlap. It means that words will come within each other if they have to be. It's, and this is clear within the, the programming of the typeface. They will not go inside each other if they can't. And also letters that in metal type, this never occurred because you, know, you had a separation, a vertical separation between the lead block. And so this kind, this, these forms, although they are, we write that way, we have been writing like that way, and we will always write that way, I hope. Um, the wow and the ra come inside each other, and this is defined by a zero overlap in the internal word space. So for Brill, we decided to stay as close as possible to, to the Arabic, especially that we were talking about the work of a Sufi scholar. Um, and so we, I go back to the base, my 12, 13 over 27.5, um, and then start shifting the values. Kept the external word space slightly open so that people don't get too confused between, between uh, one word and the other but reduced it by 50, brought the overlap back to 10 because I wanted these, uh, I didn't want to separate them too much and wanted to maintain the ligatures, the occasional ligatures that happen. Um, internal word space brought it down for the same reason and also the overlap brought it way down and also that way um, economizing on some text space and having that text block be nice and clean within the white space of the page. Um, and this is what it looks like in the book. There's one added element that you can do, which is then add the beautification element. Uh, so this is a noon mapsuta, a happy noon, happy te, um, that you can add manually, manually by word shaping in Tasmin. And then in the, same, in the same book, we have an issue with poetry. I bought this book recently thinking that it was Jalal al -Din al Rumi, but I, I seem to have mistaken and bought Ibn Rumi, uh, very, very different people. Ibn Rumi is uh, um, a poet in, from the Abbasid uh, Caliphate, 9th century, Jalal al-Din al Rumi, Sufi, Sufi poet, 13th century, Persia. Um, but anyway, it serves as an example of poetry and how it's set uh, with um, an open type, typeface. Uh, and you have the rivers, white spaces. And this is probably, you have a, a combination of typographic problem and Arabic typographic design problem. If you zoom in, you find that, okay, you're, you're stuck with some forms and you, then you, you just, you're stuck with white spaces, but the person may have not well calculated his column width. And then you have another issue, which is all these, Kashidas are not allowed in the Arabic script. Noon ye never has a kashida. They never separate. Mim noon never separates. It's, uh, it's not possible. Uh, Kera also never separates. But since anyway these shapes have been simplified, I guess you can forgive it because it is not what Arabic is. So that's, that's where you say fine, fine, you, you can do that. Uh, this is a manuscript of the same book, the third volume. Um, and it's not very well handwritten, but it still shows you the difference that Arabic really holds itself and, and it, you can play so much with, with, with Arabic. And it's very sad, so instead of cutting the word or making it like halfway, you can just go inside your gutter and, and continue. And also this important direction, like the, this diagonal direction that keeps the text kind of lively and dynamic. This is what it looks like. Poetry looks like in Akash, uh, Akash's book, the Bill book. Uh, there's lots of poetry in this book. Uh, and for every page of poetry, every word and every line of poetry, a shape of the word has been chosen. It's 666 pages. Um, it may seem complicated, but for me, this was the joy of my life. And I'm very grateful to have had the opportunity to work on this project because for the first time, I can, we can produce such a page and, and it was really a pleasure. It took immense hours of work, but, but, but the, grat the gratification after that is like, finally, yes, no more horizontal. That's great. <laughs> and you can also have on a different scale, so there are scales in Arabic. That's why, in Arabic, that's why you can mess Arabic up, but it will still be fairly readable. Uh, and you can also, you know, lay layer simple design. Uh, and go from, from very functional, simple text to text with a bit of um, 
with a bit of variations, alternates, alternate characters, and then poetry, where you can go completely wild and elasticize any word you want and morph any word you want and any letter. And this is the beauty of the Arabic script. So I'd like to end with um, a quote of my ballet teacher's ballet teacher. Uh, he's a very uh, smart young Frenchman, oh, old Frenchman, sorry. And I used to complain a lot about not being able to go to dance class every day, and this really frustrated me because I love to dance. But um, he told me, Lara, ce n'est pas la quantité de travail qui compte, il suffit de travailler intelligemment. So it's not the amount of work you put in, you have to work in a smart way. So rather than designing 19,000 glyphs or 20,000 for one font, why don't we just study the history well, understand what we're doing, and make something, a program, now that we are able to, now that we're not confined to the printing press, that really responds to the needs of the script. And that's what Decotype and I pr like to promote, and hopefully uh, we will achieve soon, someday. Thank you.